High fructose corn syrup is a sweetener made from cornstarch that has been processed by glucose isomerase to convert some of its glucose into fructose. HFCS was first marketed in the early 1970s by the Clinton Corn Processing Company, together with the Japanese Research Institute where the enzyme was discovered. Advantages of HFCS over granulated sugar include being easier to handle and being less expensive in some countries. However, there is also widespread debate concerning whether HFCS presents greater health risks than other sweeteners. Use of HFCS peaked in the late 1990s. Demand decreased due to public concern about a possible link between HFCS and metabolic diseases like obesity. In diabetes, in the United States, the Corn Refiners Association has attempted to counter negative public perceptions by marketing campaigns describing HFCS as natural and by attempting to change the name of the product to corn sugar, which the FDA rejected. Uses Food in the U.S. HFCS is among the sweeteners that mostly replace sucrose in the food industry. Factors include production quotas of domestic sugar, import tariff on foreign sugar, and subsidies of U.S. corn, raising the price of sucrose and lowering that of HFCS, making it cheapest for many sweetener applications. The relative sweetness of HFCS 55, used most commonly in soft drinks, is comparable to sucrose. Because of its superficially similar sugar profile and lower price, HFCS has been used illegally to stretch honey. Assays to detect adulteration with HFCA use differential scanning calorimetry and other advanced testing methods. Beekeeping and apiculture in the United States, HFCS became a sucrose replacement for honeybees starting in the late 1970s. When HFCS is heated to about 45 degrees C, hydroxymethyl furfural can form from the breakdown of fructose and is toxic to bees. HFCS has been investigated as a possible source of colony collapse disorder. Production Process in the contemporary process Corn is milled to produce cornstarch and an acid enzyme process is used in which the cornstarch solution is acidified to begin breaking up the existing carbohydrates, and then enzymes are added to further metabolize the starch and convert the resulting sugars to fructose. The first enzyme added is alpha amylase which breaks the long chains down into shorter sugar chains, oligosaccharides. Glucoamylases mix in and converts them to glucose. The resulting solution is filtered to remove protein, then using activated carbon, and then demineralized using ion exchange resins. The purified solution is then run over a mobilized xylosisomerase, which turns the sugars to tilde 50 to 52% glucose with some unconverted oligosaccharides and 42% fructose and again demineralized and again purified using activated carbon. Some is processed into HFCS-90 by liquid chromatography, then mixed with HFCS-42 to form HFCS-55. The enzymes used in the process are made by microbial fermentation. Composition and varieties HFCS is 24% water, the rest mainly fructose and glucose with 0-5% to unprocessed glucose oligomers. There are several varieties of HFCS, these are numbered by the percentage of fructose they contain. HFCS 42 is used in beverages, processed foods, cereals, and baked goods. HFCS 55 is mostly used in soft drinks. HFCS-90 has some niche uses but mainly mixed with HFCS-42 to make HFCS-55. History Commercial production of corn syrup began in 1864. In the late 1950s scientists at Clinton Corn Processing Company in Iowa tried to turn glucose from corn starch into fructose. 
but the process was not scalable. In 1965-1970 Yoshiyuki Takasaki, at the Japanese National Institute of Advanced Industrial Science and Technology developed a heat-stable xylocysomerase enzyme from yeast and three years later AIST partnered with the Clinton Company to commercialize the process. Prior to the development of the worldwide sugar industry, dietary fructose was limited to only a few items, milk, meats, and most vegetables. The staples of many early diets have no fructose, and only 5 to 10 percent fructose by weight is found in fruits such as grapes, apples, and blueberries. Molasses and common dried fruits have a content of less than 10% fructose sugar. From 1970 to 2000 there was a 25% increase in added sugars in the U.S. After being classified as generally recognized as safe by the U.S. Food and Drug Administration in 1976, HFCS began to replace sucrose as the main sweetener of soft drinks in the United States. At the same time, rates of obesity rose. That correlation, in combination with laboratory research and epidemiological studies that suggested a link between consuming large amounts of fructose and changes to various proxy health measures including elevated blood triglycerides, size and type of low-density lipoproteins, uric acid levels, and weight, raised concerns about health effects of HFCS itself. United States and the U.S. sugar tariffs and quotas keep imported sugar at up to twice the global price since 1797, while subsidies to corn growers cheapen the primary ingredient in HFCS, corn. Industrial uses looking for cheaper replacements rapidly adopted HFCS in the 1970s. HFCS is easier to handle than granulated sucrose, although some sucrose is transported as solution. Unlike sucrose, HFCS cannot be hydrolyzed, but the free fructose in HFCS may produce hydroxymethyl furfural when stored at high temperatures. These differences are most prominent in acidic beverages. Soft drink makers such as Coca-Cola and Pepsi use sugar in other nations but switched to HFCS in the U.S. In 1984, large corporations such as Archer Daniels Midland lobby for the continuation of government corn subsidies. Other countries, including Mexico, typically use sugar in soft drinks. Some Americans seek out Mexican Coca-Cola in ethnic groceries because they prefer the taste compared to Coca-Cola in the U.S., which is made with HFCS. Kosher for Passover Coca-Cola sold in the U.S. around the Jewish holiday also uses sucrose rather than HFCS and is also highly sought after by people who prefer the original taste. Consumption of HFCS in the U.S has declined since it peaked at 37.5 pounds per person in 1999. The average American consumed approximately 27.1 pounds of HFCS in 2012 versus 39.0 pounds of refined cane and beet sugar. European Union in the European Union, HFCS, known as isoglucose in sugar regime, is subject to a production quota. In 2005, this quota was set at 303,000 tons. In comparison, the EU produced an average of 18.6 million tons of sugar annually between 1999 and 2001. Japan in Japan, HFCS is manufactured mostly from imported U.S. corn and the output is regulated by the government. For the period from 2007 to 2012 HFCS had a 27 to 30 percent share of the Japanese sweetener market. Health Health concerns have been raised about a relationship between HFCS and metabolic disorders, and with regard to manufacturing contaminants. Obesity and metabolic disorders sugars became a health concern among the American public in the early 1970s with the publication of John Udkin's book, Pure, White and Deadly, which claimed that simple sugars, an increasingly large part of the Western diet, were dangerous. 
In the 1980s and 1990s Gerald Revan and Sheldon Reiser of the USDA published papers discussing the dangers of dietary fructose from consumption of sucrose and of HFCS, especially with regard to heart disease, diabetes, and obesity. These concerns came to the public's attention through media attention to a 2004 commentary in the American Journal of Clinical Nutrition that suggested that the altered metabolism of fructose when compared to glucose may be a factor in increasing obesity rates since, as compared to glucose, fructose may be more readily converted to fat and the sugar causes less of a rise in insulin and leptin both of which increased feelings of satiety. Fructose, in contrast to glucose, was shown to potently stimulate lipogenesis. In subsequent interviews, two of the study's authors stated the article was distorted to place emphasis solely on HFCS when the actual issue was the overconsumption of any type of sugar, while fructose absorption and modification by the intestines and liver does differ from glucose initially. The majority of the fructose molecules are converted to glucose or metabolized into byproducts identical to those produced by glucose metabolism. Consumption of moderate amounts of fructose has also been linked to positive outcomes, including reducing appetite if consumed before a meal, lower blood sugar increases compared to glucose, and delaying exhaustion if consumed during exercise. In 2007, an expert panel assembled by the University of Maryland Center for Food, Nutrition and Agriculture Policy reviewed the links between HFCS and obesity and concluded there was no ecological validity in the association between rising body mass indexes and the consumption of HFCS. The panel stated that since the ratio of fructose to glucose had not changed substantially in the United States since the 1960s when HFCS was introduced, the changes in obesity rates were probably not due to HFCS specifically but rather a greater consumption of calories overall, and recommended further research on the topic. In 2009 the American Medical Association published a review article on HFCS and concluded that based on the science available at the time, it appeared unlikely that HFCS contributed more to obesity or other health conditions than sucrose, and there was insufficient evidence to suggest warning about or restricting use of HFCS or other fructose-containing sweeteners in foods. The review did report that studies found direct associations between high intakes of fructose and adverse health outcomes, including obesity and the metabolic syndrome. Epidemiological research has suggested that the increase in metabolic disorders like obesity and non-alcoholic fatty liver disease is linked to increased consumption of sugars and or calories in general, and not due to any special effect of HFCS. A 2012 review found that fructose did not appear to cause weight gain when it replaced other carbohydrates in diets with similar calories. High fructose consumption has been linked to high levels of uric acid in the blood, though this is only thought to be a concern for patients with gout. Numerous agencies in the United States recommend reducing the consumption of all sugars, including HFCS without singling it out as presenting extra concerns. The Mayo Clinic cites the American Heart Association's recommendation that women limit the added sugar in their diet to 100 calories a day and that men limit it to 150 calories a day, noting that there is not enough evidence to support HFCS having more adverse health effects than excess consumption of any other type of sugar. The United States Departments of Agriculture and Health and Human Services recommendations for a healthy diet state that consumption of all types of added sugars be reduced. People with fructose malabsorption should avoid foods containing HFCS. Manufacturing contaminants HFCS contains reactive dicarbonyl compounds that are created during the processing steps. These dicarbonyl compounds can in turn create advanced glycation end products, 
the possible health effects of which were under investigation as of 2013, in the contemporary process to make HFCS an acid enzyme process is used in which the cornstarch solution is acidified to begin breaking up the existing carbohydrates, and then enzymes are added to further metabolize the starch and convert the resulting sugars to their constituents of fructose and glucose. A chemical used to separate cornstarch from the kernel, lye was formerly manufactured using a process that included mercury, and scientists decided to investigate if HFCS used in food contained mercury. Two papers published in 2009 found that there were traces of inorganic mercury in some foods. However, the mercury was not methylmercury, the form of mercury that is of most concern to human health public relations. There are various public relations concerns with HFCS, including with its labeling as natural, with its advertising, with companies that have moved back to sugar, and a proposed name change to corn sugar. In 2010 the Corn Refiners Association applied to allow HFCS to be renamed corn sugar but were rejected by the United States Food and Drug Administration in 2012.